Hi everyone, welcome to Itsy Bitsy's live read of Shattered Melody by Amy McKinley, Chapter 1, Three Years Ago. Emma peered at the slick road through the frantic back and forth of the windshield wipers. Heavy gray clouds hung in the darkening sky as she and Danny sped along a long stretch of county road to their college. Even with the turn the weather had taken, the trip to picnic by the lake had been worth it. They needed to replenish their creative wells. They were close to finishing the problematic song they were writing for their final exam, which was why they were in the car. Emma had hoped a break from the studio would cox a solution from their tired brains. It usually worked for her, and as she listened to the rain drum against the car, her eyelids drifted shut and her mind relaxed. That was all she needed, really, and after a few minutes, it worked. The cadence of the rain sparkled an idea, and she turned off the radio and looked over to Danny to run a few chords, chord changes by him. The words fell away as he gripped the steering wheel so tightly that his knuckles turned white. Suddenly, the screech of metal grinding against metal split the air. Her body jerked against her locked seatbelt, and she clutched, clutched the dash as they fishtailed. The tires spun on the slick road, and Danny's curses filled that car, loudly enough that they were almost drowned out by the thundering noise of her rapid pulse, which vibrated through her body. He regained a semblance of control as they skidded to the shoulder of the road. The rhythmic alarm of tires rolling over the rumble strips grated on her nerves until Danny adjusted their course back onto the pavement. Her craned she craned her neck, trying to find reason for almost crashing. What the fuck? Danny accelerated in an attempt to put space between them and the boxy vehicle that revved its engine and quickly moved from behind them to their left. The driver closed the gap, coming too close to the rear quarter paddle. Emma braced herself for another hit. With her throat in her with her heart in her throat, she tried to get a glimpse of their assailant. Through the drizzle of rain, she took note of the black sedan with tinted windows. Throughout head without headlights or a street lamp, she couldn't see the driver. She lurched forward, and the seatbelt locked again. Frantically, she pushed on the tether until it gave. Her purse lay on the floor, it con its contents thrown around her feet. Bent over her knees, she patted the dark mat until her fingers closed around her phone. She sat up and called 911. An operator answered, asking what her emergency was. She needed help. They were being run, we need help. We're being run off the road. Tears filled her eyes. Where are you located? The calm tones of the operator's voice did little to ease her worry. Out of town on Route 50 N, her body jerked and the phone flew from her hand and smashed into the dash. Her head cracked against the passenger window and pain exploded in her temple. Hold on, Em. Danny covered over the sounds of yelled over the sounds of engines and screeching tires. Her vision tunneled to him, and she clung to the sound of his voice. Shit. Danny didn't have his seatbelt on. Time and again she chastised him about that. He winked and tell her not to worry. In their small college town, nothing dangerous ever happened. As they flew down the country road, she fumbled, yanking on her seatbelt's shoulder strap to loosen it. Once it was slack, she stretched for his, for his belt. Her arm snaked around his body, taking care to keep out of his line of sight or steering mobility. After a few tries, she grasped the exclusive, exclusive strap and pulled it over to the cliff, letting go of the slack on hers. She panted and felt her airway clutch in fear when she looked to her right and saw a huge drop-off. Metal clanged as she tried to lock his, seat, his belt into place, with the car swerving left and right. She leaned over and peeked in Danny's side mirror while the belt cut into her body. They were still in front. The black car had moved behind them once more with their latest swerve. With another tug, she gave Dan Danny's seatbelt she got Danny's seatbelt lined up. Metal struck metal. The car jerked, caught the side of the road, and slid. The clip flew out of her hands and clanged against the door as they canteened off the road. 
A scream tore from her throat. Their car tumbled over the side of the steep hill, slid. They slammed into something solid. Glass shattered. The airbags deployed. Then silence met her ears. A mumble attempt at Danny's name fell from her mouth. Her mind faded in and out with each slow blink. Pain throbbed in her temple and chest. She gazed at the deflated airbag which had held her in place as they crashed. Pink? A combination of warm and cold coated her face. It had been raining and that fact filled her mind. Glass. Had that been the windshield? Thoughts came slowly and with each one she sluggishly attempted to process the situation. With care, she, she shifted her left hand. Encouraged by the, mo the small movement, she worked her heavy arm up to touch her face. Warm stickiness coated her cheek. Cold and wet pellets stung her head, face, and hand. Panic swelled in her chest, and her heart rate increased. Still immobilized by her seatbelt, she tried to pry her eyes open. And in tiny increments, she succeeded in lifting her swollen eyelids. Her face was pinned to the side and a whimper left her raw throat at what she thought she saw on the roadside, high above where the car had crashed to a halt. The other vehicle. Has our attacker stopped? Is he coming down to finish us off? In short, staccato pulls, she drew in air as pain radiated in her lungs. The bite of her seatbelt in her shoulder and chest evoked another realization. Oh God, Danny. She focused on his on his seat, his empty seat. Blood coated the wheel. Flash shards were all around her. She realized her gaze as much as possible. But terror gripped her as she stared at the broken glass of rain that pelleted Danny's seat. It could have only meant one thing. He had gone through the windshield. Please be alive. Tears flooded her eyes and her vision blurred to slight to slightlessness as minutes ticked by. A whirling sound buzzed in her ears. Seconds passed before she processed what it was. In the distance, sirens approached. With rescuer, rescuers on the way, she allowed her mind to slip into unconsciousness. Chapter 2 Present Day Emma's fing fingers flew over the keyboard, sending the rich passion of the melody to fill the room. The song was in its development phase, so she added a company music. Haunting notes harmonized with the lyrics, gathering energy and intensity as the song progressed. When she played the last bar and sang the final verse, she lifted her shaking hands from the keys and swiped a few tears that escaped from her cheeks. The piece resonated with deep, unfulfilled longing for love that festered within her. Pausing, she lifted, she picked up the pencil sitting on the music rack and made another notation on the lead sheet. The crackle of the fire was the only other sound in the cozy room. Humming a few bars first, she then played with the lyrics. The sound of her cell phone rang jarred her thought process. She scooted the piano bench back and then rose to check the caller ID on her phone. She meant to assign ringtones, but she hadn't gotten to it yet. Sliding the bar on the screen, she accepted the, her agent's call. Hi, Linda. Emma, how's the song coming? She grinned. Typical Linda. Right to business. Settling in on her cream-colored Chesterfield couch, she gave a courtesy glance to the blanket of snow that covered everything outside the window. Linda got down to the reason for her call. You know me well. Just getting work out of the way, then we can chat. The sound of paper shuffling carried through the connection. I have several new clients who are begging for a chance to have your lyrics. Every, anyone you think I'd be interested in? One or two. Before we get into that, how's a new song coming? Her cat ninja jumped up on the couch and curled up on the other, uh, the other end, using the pillow to cushion her head. Emma moved closer and ran her fingers through ninja's soft fur. Good, I figured out the melody and lyrics, except the last line. It's close. I don't have any need to ask you this, as you've always made the deadline before, but will it be ready in the next week? Of course, maybe. I also called because I'm concerned about how isolated you are on that mountain in Montana. 
I checked the weather and saw a massive snowstorm headed your way. You may want to stock up on, on groceries. Or if you need me to, I can call an order in and have it delivered. Are you sure you're okay there? I worry about you. Linda, I love it here, and the fact all my correspondent goes through you helps me not to worry as much. That's a given. Whatever I can do keep my, to keep my top client happy. Have you picked up the scanner and fax for your sheet music yet? It would ease my mind to know you don't have to travel in that weather. Emma grinned again. Right. The benefit you'd be... You, would be you'd receive the competitions compositions faster as opposed to snail mail and no i did not get them going into an ele electronic store or the mall is not high on my list of things to do i figured amusement colored linda's voice i picked out a top of the line scanner and fax and shipped it to you as a little gift it should arrive soon what would i do without you linda well dear i think that is an the other way around I'm going to send through the bios and social media links for the two musicians I think would be a good fit for you. Do you foresee any issues with my terms? No. They're communicating through me and are chomping at the bit to get a hold of your work. Read over the information I sent to your email this morning and let me know what you think of their lyrical needs. I'll do that later today. I want to get in another hour of this song. Hopefully that'll wrap it up. Fabulous. I won't keep you. And Emma, make sure to run into town today before the storm, storm comes. Or call the grocery store and have them deliver it so that you can, if you can't, make it out. I will. Thanks, Linda. Bye, dear. Connecting, disconnecting the call, Emma went over to the piano and plucked the lead sheet from the music rack. Humming the bars, she read through the song as she paced her living room. Ninja watched with a lazy flick of her tail as Emma's feet followed a past path memorized from countless musings not once bumping into the coffee table along her circular route. She was lost in the lyrics she woven together so the knock at the door took her a moment to register. That was fast. It must be a package that it must be the package Linda mentioned. The only people who dropped by unannounced were the delivery boy from the grocery store, the mailman, and an occasional realtor. <coughs> With a turn, she slid the bolt back and swung open the door. Her eyes widened as surprise immobilized her. Not the delivery guy. Broad shoulders encased in a wool coat filled the doorframe. Her gaze traveled higher over a square job with a dusting of a five o'clock shadow and lips that curved up the corners in a grin before locking into blue eyes. His short, almost black hair provided the perfect contrast to his blue eyes and a jolt of awareness shot through her. Temporarily, her surroundings ceased to exist as she stared. Hello? His deep baritone shiver sent shivers down her body and she blinked or is that the chill from outside concern etched across his features as his smile dropped and he fur and his furrowed eyebrows he pointed to the huge house that had been for sale for several months i moved into the johnson house a ways up the road and thought i'd come over and induce myself i'm reese miller damn it all her other nearby neighbors valued their privacy as much as she did why did he have to move into this particular house? Her realtor, Lenoir, had stopped by a few months ago as a courtesy to let her know the property had gone on the market. She kept the doorknob in her hand and close to her body. She kept his access to see inside at a minimum by crowding the door frame. It's nice to meet you, Reese. The chill in her heart transferred loud and clear to her greeting. I'm Emma. It was no accident that she withheld her last name. He paused, and silence filled the space between them. The pounding of her heart was the only noise she heard. Her fingers gripped the door tightly, ready to slam it shut if he made any attempt to shove his way inside. He frowned. Are you okay? She snapped out of her stupor and forced a smile. Yes, of course. Well, I thought I'd introduce myself and drop my phone number off in case there was an emergency. She pressed her lips together. His look turned speculative. There's a big storm coming through here, and I thought it would be a good idea to exchange numbers. He handed her a piece of paper with his name and number on it, and, the, 
on it that he pulled from his pocket. Releasing the door jam, he ex she accepted the piece of paper with no intention of reciprocating the offer. Thanks, Reese. Um, I think Rick and Casey would be a great contact for you, anything you might need. They live a few miles from your house, farther up the mountain. She cleared her suddenly tight throat. I need to get back to work, but it was nice of you to drop by. I hope you enjoy your new home and the quiet up here. Please take the hint and leave me alone. Thank you for listening.